a very warm welcome. In this video, we'll cover the various aspects of an SPC study, that is stability, normality and capability. We will also cover what should be the sequence in these three and why. The first step is to make the process stable. By stable, it means there are no special causes acting, so that the process will be able to give a sustained performance. Even if the process is capable, that is, CP, CPK or PP, PPK acceptable, it can become incapable at any point in time due to the occurrence of a special cause. And we cannot predict whether a process capable today can be incapable tomorrow, or a process that is incapable today being capable tomorrow unless the process is stable. Once the process is stable, next step in SPC is to check for normality. If the process is stable, it doesn't necessarily mean it is normal. And unless the process is normal, process capability, that is CPCPK, or process performance, that is PPPPK, calculation is irrelevant, since these indices consider process as normal in the first case. Let's understand these parameters further. Stability. For stability, the special causes in a particular process need to be identified, studied and acted upon, to ensure it doesn't show up again since it can ultimately affect process performance. Acting upon these special causes doesn't always mean removing them. Instead, a thoughtful analysis is to be done whether the special cause is beneficial, helps us to move towards desired target or helps us to reduce variation, or non-beneficial takes us away from desired target or causes increase in variation. If the special cause is beneficial, the process needs to be standardized to make it part of the process. And if it is non-beneficial, it needs to be removed. But the problem is, we can't detect a special cause just by looking at the data. We need a tool that helps in this task, and that tool is the control chart. One of the major mistake people make is using the X bar R control chart everywhere without considering whether it is appropriate based on the situation. Selection of control chart should be done properly in order to get desired results. Another mistake is keeping the control limits fixed or changing the control limits too often. If the process is not showing special causes, the control limits can be recalculated based on the available data. And if the process is changed, for example by taking actions on special causes, control limits should be recalculated to suit the changes. Once a certain time is given for studying and understanding the process, using a control chart, and after the confidence is built that the process is under control, that is stable, we can move to the next step that is normality. Normality? As covered earlier, just because the process is stable, it doesn't mean that the process is normal. By normal. It means the process is following a normal distribution. In order to check whether the process is normal, an anderson darling or similar normality test can be performed. If the data is not normal, efforts should be taken on making the process normal to get desired results. And if not feasible, data transformation can be done using box cox or similar transformation. Such a transformation converts the original data to give us modified data which can be near to normal or normal. This modified data, again need to be checked for normality, since it is not always possible to get normal data even after using box cox or similar transformation. After we ensure the data is normal, we can move to our next step, that is process capability or performance calculations. In case a process is not normal, another measure that is CNP, CNPK can be used after approval from customer. Since it is not commonly used, you can find more information in the standard called ISO 22514-4. Due to time constraint and this measure not being very common, we won't be able to cover it here. If the process is stable and normal, process capability, that is CPCPK, or process performance, that is PPPPK, can be calculated to check how the process performs in comparison to specifications, that is tolerance. If the process is not capable or not performing good in comparison to specifications, the first step should be to bring the process on target, that is, specification center, not nominal in every case, that way process will have, fewer, out of specification parts. The next step can be to reduce variation or increase specification range, that is tolerance. Usually, the process that is stable tend to have the least variation, 
Hence we won't generally need to focus on reducing variation and our focus area can be to shift the target, as covered in the earlier step. If the process shows a higher variation, that is low CP or PP, reducing further variation after the process is stable is only possible after redesigning of process. So, a focused effort is required to redesign the process for reducing variation. If it is not possible to reduce variation further, an increase of specification range can be considered to achieve the desired level of capability or performance after approval of the customer, wherever required. Thank you so much for your time. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit bell icon if you like the content.